Welcome and good evening. This is Raph from Adventures in DeFi Kingdom streaming to you live high above the keep in the hot air balloon. Tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Titan Tom. Titan, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Raph. Thanks for having me. All right, and of course we have uh, my fearless co-host as always, Nindorf, back from his perilous journey from ETH Denver. How you doing, Nindorf? Doing pretty good. Quarantine to the basement, though. Sometimes that happens when you're traveling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I hope you're feeling better soon. All right. Well, uh, Titan Tom, how about you give us um, a brief intro on yourself? You are a admin on our, our Discord site, so a big thanks to you for uh, you know, the, the support that you're providing to our Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms uh, uh, community here. So uh, tell us about yourself. Oh uh, sure. So I'm I am a professional poker player. Still play. That's my day job. Um, got into crypto you know, back in the bubble of 2017, and um, yeah, got into DFK in the beginning of December. Um, started putting in you know more and more. Kind of uh, rode the hype of the, the Crystal Vale snapshot for a while, and then uh, started rebuying more on this latest dip and. You know, once I got into the community, I just, you know, kind of just fell in love with everybody in the community and, you know, saw how good the good of a job the devs were doing and, you know, just decided, you know, to, like, well, I just gained more conviction over time and just started putting more into my investment and now I'm just kind of obsessed with DFK and here we are. Awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's diff obviously we're from a bit different walks of life but you know i think we you know we definitely mirror a very similar story where very cautious uh <laughs> into dfk at first and then you know c couldn't help but being sucked in the rest of the way yeah i'm just uh you know getting involved in the community and you know i've been listening to your podcast and you know every bit of content dfk i can get my hands on and everybody's doing a good job and just excited to see the community grow yeah all right. Well, we're glad to have you. All right. So, you know, one thing that I wanted to go through quick here on the intro, uh, we are expanding our podcast network a little bit here in Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. we got a great Discord community, and we have a few members over on our Discord site um, led up by Guy Kidd, uh, who's also one of our admins. And uh, go check out their podcast. They are starting the Bogside Chat Podcast. Their information, um, it's on YouTube. I'm hovering over their, uh, their channel right now for those of you who are watching us on the stream. Um, and we'll, we'll drop a link to their, their podcast. So, you know, do us a favor, do them a favor, and, you know, go subscribe, like, um, and, you know, jump into to what they're working on. I'm really excited that, you know, um, we, got, we got more folks inside the Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms Network uh, you know, wanting to get good information out there to, you know, both our Discord community and the rest of uh, the, the DeFi Kingdoms community. So uh, go check them out, please. All right, Nindorf, uh, give us the question of the day. Yeah, so I feel like you, you turn around and, and you miss something. I, there's been all this talk about a, a PJ. What, what in the heck is a PJ? What, what is this on Discord I'm hearing about? I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Titan Tom is the sure it stands for peanuts and jelly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about the where's the butter? Come on. <laughs> uh, uh, I thought it stood for uh, uh, parental jerry raking. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, that one. <laughs> All right. No, I just yeah, I just had to be I had to be a little kind of funny on this one because it's like all anybody can talk about now is of course the perilous journey that's been announced. So you know, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll give it back to you, Raph, but I just thought that'd be kind of a funny way to get moving today once we have all this information to get through. Yeah, and, you know, we're going to, we're certainly going to dive into that. I think we're going to go straight into reaction mode. Um, you know, we'll talk about dev dive here first, um, but we don't really want to jump into the, the details on the Perilous Journey. You can go find that information on uh, the DeFi Kingdom stocks page. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're going to just do some hot takes here so all right let's uh first go to uh the dev dive uh nine if you got some really exciting things going on 
Um, why don't you uh, go ahead and uh, let us know what, what, what you're working on? Yeah, so first of all, I would like to welcome all the new people who you know, joined the podcast as subscribers. And you know, we, I, I got to give a big shout out to Sandwich Punch and Baby Punch and his crew because they, you know, they gave us a pretty good uh, shout out on their cast. And, and now we've, you know, we've noticed a bunch of people who have said, hey, I didn't realize this tool was out there. You know, I'm really enjoying it now. You know, so I really want to thank them for the, that exposure. And, you know, well, like I said, we're, we're really just trying to hook people up with these tools that are going to save you time. Honestly, that's that's the real motivation here is I don't want people to have to sit there and scrape the tavern for hours. Like, that's just no fun when you want to just be focusing on the gameplay here. So, right. yeah, I just wanted to start there. Right. And um, you guys almost cro- cross paths in uh, East Denver, right? Just about, yeah. Unfortunately, we were offset by about a day. And that oh. was when um, the, the Fiat mine that brought me to Denver actually called me in later hours. So I wasn't able to catch up with those guys. But uh, just about, though. Yeah, too bad. Well, uh, hopefully we can uh, catch up with them soon and, you know, maybe uh, have them back on the pod and, you know, maybe join theirs as well. Yeah, you bet. So the next thing, um, just some minor quality of life improvements. I've had some good suggestions from people um, in our community. So some of those sorts of things have been rolling in um, and and you you might see a few minor tweaks. But I think one of the big things that uh, that we're working on lately, there's, there's really two things. Uh, you have been, rather than working on the Power BI reports, and I'll let you touch on those. Um, and then I have been working on getting Discord DMs instead of alert, or uh, sorry, instead of emails for alerts. So um, if you want to touch on the BI reports, I'll uh, I'll collect my thoughts here on the Discord. Sure, yeah, um, I, I certainly can. So uh, this is something that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to check out more of and, and, and look at how can... How can we present information to our users? That's you know really been our our goal, um, and and how can we make it more readily accessible? I, th- I think there's kind of two goals that, that as we've been thinking about what's our what's our purpose and what's our drive. Uh, the first one is fundamentally how do we democratize the data, as I like to call it. Um, and so uh, over on on the Discord channel. Uh, we got a fun little Power BI reports page. Go check that out. I'd, I'd love some feedback. Um, you know, I've, I've done Power BI for I, lightly now for maybe about a year, and I'm, I'm really excited to continue to dive into this. Uh, so again, if you check out Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms over on the uh, Power BI reports um, little tab here that we have in the ADFK website, um, yeah, please please check that out. I'm trying to show some you know useful information. Uh, we have a a, a database that just has uh, hero data readily accessible um, and hoping to allow users to export that into Excel if you want to go ahead and, you know, th- that way you don't have to scrape the blockchain uh, yourself. Uh, we'll do that for you and we'll try to get it into a usable format. You know, a big question that I get on a frequent basis is how do I see R1 easily on multiple heroes that I'm trying to look up at once? And so you can do that there. Uh, and then we're trying to replicate some reports where we're looking at um, stats, uh, number of heroes out there um, total in the in, in DeFi kingdoms, number of heroes summoned per period of time as well. Um, I, right now, I have average price uh, per different professions and average price per uh, different classes, and I'm hoping to transform that eventually into a floor price tool. Uh, that formula is proving to be a, a little tricky for me to write at the moment, uh, but I know it's it's absolutely doable. So I'm really I'm, I'm hopeful for that. And you know, it's one of those things where sometimes you uh, you build something that you feel will benefit you in hopes that it'll benefit more more people outside of yourself. So uh, that's the short of it on uh, on Power BI. So yeah, looking forward to some feedback from from our, our listeners and viewers out there. Back to you, Nindorf. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I think even back in, I don't know if it was late December when I first got access to the third third party dev APIs, um, you know, and it's, it's kind of a software guy, you know, I was able to dig in and kind of mine that data. And I was like, whoa, what's this advanced uh, active and passive abilities? And, you know, we I feel like we shed the light on that like way early because, you know, it's like one of those things that I'd happened to notice that there were some uh, of those heroes being held in wallets of like the devs. And I was like, ooh, this is important. 
And, you know, it's like that sort of information. We just want to get out to our, our, our listeners and make sure that everybody's got the most up-to-date information. <laughs> and I'm uh, just thinking now, I, I trailed off. I said there's there's our two goals, and I think I only listed one. Um, <laughs> so our first goal is how do we democratize the data, make it more readily accessible to everyone. Uh, second goal is, you know, really what we've, we've done with Nindorf and, uh, you know, the DFK website. And so it, one part is it brings data to you. The other part is how can we create a, a tool that allows it to be more, you know, create some efficiencies in your life. Um, and that's your, your Tavern Alert system in a nutshell. You know, you could spend 10 hours a day scraping the tavern, just, you know, waiting for that that hero to, to drop, um, you know, constantly clicking the refresh button. Uh, but that's where the alert system really comes into play is, is we're also hoping to provide tools that um, can enhance your your efficiency of, of how you interface with the game. And that's really, you know, our, our, our two main goals. That's, sorry I interrupted there. No, you're, you're just fine. Yeah. And then so the last item that we've been working on is the replacing, not necessarily replacing, but giving an option for users to, to elect Discord messaging instead of emails for their alerts from the tavern. Um, I've, I've got that pushed out to a test server that we run, and that's working pretty well. So look forward to that in the next, I would say, what, day, probably. I should be able to push that out. Um, and if it's confusing to anybody, just let me know. And we'll, you know, I think that's one of the things that, uh, as a more of an embedded engineer, I, I have a hard time with some of the user interface stuff sometimes, and it seems obvious to me because I wrote it. So everybody please feel free uh dm us on discord let us know if something doesn't make sense and we'll try to get it cleaned up for you yeah that's that's awesome i've been you know the the lucky guinea pig i guess uh using the alerts yeah. in discord i i like it a lot more than email um I, it's been working well for me titan tom let's uh ask you a quick question here so what do you you currently using uh, for alerts and maybe what has been your most recent uh, buy based on the alert system? Um, yeah, so I, I love the alerts. Um, I think I hit up uh, Nine Door a couple of weeks ago uh, just asking how I could get, get access to it and uh, maybe you guys could shed light on what the easiest way for them to do that is, but I think you just uh, sub the podcast and then message you guys or something like that, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we do have a uh, so, so the podcast is on Anchor. That'll be in the show notes, both in YouTube and, you know, whether you're getting Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or Anchor, um, you'll be able to, it'll direct you to the Anchor website, and you can go ahead and, and subscribe there. Uh, you can also DM us directly, and, and we'll accept direct payment. Um, and eventually here, sometime in the next, I don't know, one to two months, we'll see how things go. Uh, but we are planning on on switching the payment system over directly to the website. Um, that'll be just, it, it'll be a little easier to use. I think a lot of our international patrons out there, they've been struggling with, um, not on their behalf, but the, the anchor website system has been kind of locking them out, not accepting their credit card information. So, uh, making it a bit of a hassle for everyone involved. So, you know, we'd really like to just tie it directly to the site. Um, I think it just makes it a lot easier, um, and we'll make it a lot more straightforward. So, um, again, we've talked about this a couple of podcasts uh, back, and you know we're going to try to give everyone ample notice. We're going to go ahead and cancel any an anchor subscriptions that are out there well before we require people to start the subscription up on the website. Uh, you know, we, we're not in the business to, to double charge anyone, so that's that's kind of our our long term plan. Um, in the short term, you know, sub on Anchor, uh, support us there. Or uh, go ahead and, and message us in Discord, and, and we'll get you a link to the access system. So you got to give us a, a little more than that, though, Titan Tom. So yeah. uh, what uh, what heroes have you you picked up? Yeah, I mean, just straight away, just saying, I love the the alert system. It's awesome. And I'm really super excited about having it in the the Discord DMs too, because I you know my email isn't always alerted. Like I have it, you know, I check it a couple times a day, but it's Discord is is more urgent. So I'm I'm excited to have that up to you guys get that running but um yeah i've i've, I've got a i nagged i snagged a couple of of nice ones i think i got a uncommon dragoon for like 120 nice tavern a a good deal. and then i think yeah i got one of my one of my rare advance doing that too it was a pretty cheap price i 
a lot of times the alerts that I have set are kind of too stringent. So I, you know, I'll get the alert and then I'll run into the tavern and it'll already be gone. So it's like that good of a deal, but <laughs> definitely get the alert. And one of these times I'm going to get it. Yeah, those bots will get you. <laughs> I know, right? Yes, they certainly will. All right, yeah, so... But that, it's, Go ahead. I was just going to say, sorry, the, I mean, the, the, the price of subbing the subbing for the, uh, the podcast, it pays for itself. I mean, the alerts are, are incredible. They're going to save you, you know, that much money easily in the first purchase you make, right? So... Although I will say it's a little addicting, so it uh, yeah. as, as Nindorf has called before, it, it does uh, remove the uh, the jewel very effectively from from uh, from my wallet. Oh yeah, you, you, too many times. It's funny because I think Raph, you and I have some very similar alerts. So I'll see it. I'll look at my phone. I'm like, uh, nah. And then like five minutes later, I'm like, oh, I just picked up this guy. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I thought. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have- I actually had a funny story about that when I was eating my dinner, like out in my living room. I was having, I just got a nice big bowl of pokey, like the large size with five scoops of, of protein. I got, <laughs> I got an alert on my email. There was a, there was a rare sage, three out of three. We we're going for two ninety, which is just an, an incredible offer. So I like, I spit out my food, left my food on the table, ran into my computer to try to move some some liquidity over so I can make the purchase. I saw that it was still on there, and then right when I was like moving on the purchase, uh, somebody snagged it right before me, and I was I was just like I was just gutted, you know. I was like, oh man, I like I didn't get it. I walked back into my living room, and my dog ate my whole bowl of pokey. <laughs> so I just left it there. I was like in a rush. I was like, oh god. Oh jeez. Not only did I not get the purchase, but I my dog ate my dinner. So All right, you want to know something there. even better? is uh so i uh i had a a bit of a boo-boo over the last month here i was um accidentally i was in putting the kids to bed uh the gen ones and as i like to call them uh, endearingly so and um i was going through my the, the heroes that i had listed for sale and i was you know canceling relisting canceling relisting canceling relisting you know um, and of course, getting distracted uh, with the, the, the Gen 1s kind of, you know, going crazy, being rowdy, as they do before bedtime. And I accidentally sold my Gen, or my, my rare Sage. <laughs> um, and oh. I listed it for what I thought was going to be the higher price, because mentally, I, what I did is, because when you're in the sales section, you can hit cancel higher, and then what I did is I listed it. I listed it for sale for the higher price that I thought I was going for. And so I believe you were looking at my wonderful rare sage that I accidentally no. uh, dropped, and uh, I had a little bit of uh, a freak out moment. I tried to. I ended up liquidating some from the gardens and buying it back, and it was a bit of a boo boo because I lost a about 150 jewel in in the entire transaction i might have been a little more than that but yeah oh, it wow. was it was one of those where it's like oh that one i felt i felt a little nauseous and sick for a while and I, I didn't even know if i should go go back and grab it or not but as i was telling nine dwarf you know i had a, a little bit of an attachment issue to this sage it was my first and uh you know he's level five as well so Oh boy! So I don't know. It maybe it was a, a different sage that you found, but that that was uh, I don't know. Pretty I- ironic that you brought that up. Might might have been the same one. I was gonna, I was about to say too that uh, the salt was was rubbed in the wound because I saw it immediately re- relisted for like four thirty, and then it, <laughs> it was bought, and then it was immediately re- relisted again for four eighty right after that. Yeah. So yeah. Like, uh, that's oh, man, that, 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 that sounds like my friend. That's for sure. Oh, no. So yeah. I, I think that's a good point that, you know, we, Raph, you and I have talked offline. And if I ever get some downtime here, we've uh, actually really considered putting out. Um, so some of the code that we have that the site runs on for auctions is already scraping and watching blockchain events. We're really considering putting out a bot to purchase, to, to try to find these people who list heroes for accidentally, accidentally way below floor. Um, and give them back to their owners 
Uh, we just saw recently another Gen Zero that got sold for what? What was it? Twenty Jewel. Twenty Jewel. I think it was. Yep. And like you know, we just want we want this community to be fun, and that's one of those like the financial chaos of selling a Gen Zero. It was a legendary Gen Zero. Legendary for Gen Jewel. Zero warrior. Yeah. And like we, I think it's since I have the capability of writing such a bot. I wanted to compete with the other bots that are just trying to make money. Yeah. And that's something that we're really thinking about launching. And, you know, if I have some downtime between features, um, because we, I, I don't know, that that just makes you want to throw up when you hear people that have made that mistake. It, it's it's kind of winning by cheat, you know. And I, Right, right. We, so that's just, I wanted to mention that because it's something that you and I had talked quite yeah, a while about after that happened. Yeah, we're going to call it our Gen Zero Rescue Program. Yeah, I actually had a few people in the community reach out to me and say, hey, do you know anyone who runs these bots? This guy's trying to get his Gen Zero hero back. He's like, did you hear about this? And I was like, yeah, I, we we saw it right away with the notification that popped up. And we were looking at it. And I was like, oh, man, I started feeling sick to my stomach for this guy. I was like, I couldn't believe it. And some every once in a while on, on the alert system, We'll get alerts for uh, private sales as well. Or maybe you disabled that. Uh, yeah, I fixed that now, but okay. you used to get those. I, so I thought that's what it was. Uh, I was at work, I and I was like 20 minutes late on the alert, and I went to check it out, and I started messaging you, and I was like, oh, goodness gracious, this guy's got to be in a world of hurt right now. So, yeah, I mean, we were, we were certainly feeling for him. Um, I mean, not as much as his wallet was, but... Yeah, we're going to try to create a, a Gen Zero Rescue Hero program. I, I think if we could save a, a few more people from, you know, a, a similar fate. I mean, my, you know, thankfully my Sage mishap it was not that painful. Um, yeah, that's that's miserable. So I, I hope the uh, the guy that has the bot does the right thing, gets it back to him. I'm a little worried that's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, you know. Uh, hoping to, to create a, a, a better place here in the community. Big thanks to you, Nindorf. You definitely have the technical know-how for that. All right, yeah. well, let's go ahead and uh, talk about um, pajamas now. So, yeah, that's what it was, right? Yeah, so like I promised, um, we're not going to dive through uh, the notes. If, if you go into uh, the DFK Docs page, you can look at, you know, what uh what the perilous journey uh statistics are what the rate of um you know, how perilous it's going to be and what the rewards are if you survive and if you die so let's go for some straight up reactions uh titan tom let's start with you uh what was kind of your your gut reaction it, i guess first off did you were you able to listen live and then what was your gut reaction if you did yeah i did listen live i was kind of reading through you know skipping head on the dock as he was reading it, and my initial reaction was, oh man, this doesn't seem as good as I thought it was going to be. But then after he went through and explained everything, I, I was kind of like, hmm, maybe this is actually better than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, it's kind of a, a, a whirlwind of emotions, I guess you could say, as he was going through that. It was kind of a, I feel like this is going to be a pretty, you know, big decision that could could steer the, the direction for a lot of people on, you know, on their DFK future. All right, nine what, What's your gut? Are you going to send some people? What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm going to think about it some more, but I, my, my gut right now is that I'm probably going to send about seventy five percent of my heroes. Wow, and nice. I'm just going to keep my, basically my best ones. I don't know if you wanted me to go through some of my strategy thoughts on on that right now, but yeah, let's yeah, jump we'll, in. We'll circle back around. Yeah, we'll okay. jump into that in a little bit. Nindorf, what's your uh, your immediate reaction? Yeah, so um, my first thing was I was happy that um, that level played a part in the percentages and the rewards. I was kind of disappointed that it was not as prevalent as um, rarity and uh, your advanced or elite classes. Uh, you know, I think from a lore perspective, it actually makes a lot more sense. If somebody's got experience, it's not a green hero, if you will. So mm -hmm. I was a little upset by that. You know, people have put time and quested these heroes out. Um, but that doesn't actually make all that much difference. So my, that was my first reaction. Uh, my second reaction is I was really hoping that 
that summons remaining were going to be calibrated in. Like maybe it's your attunement with Gaia is still there and she'll be on your side to help your hero survive. Um, uh, and that just did not figure in at all, which I'm not really surprised. I was just kind of on the off chance that that would happen, really hoping. Because I got a couple heroes that have several summons left. I have no intention of summoning with them now. But now they're, they're basically off the list for the journey because I don't, I, I don't want to waste that. There's no payment for it. So those are my two big things that stuck out to me, honestly. Yeah, the, uh, the the main thing that stuck out to me, I thought most of the rewards were fairly lackluster. It's the, uh, the, the newest reward, what they had kind of held back from the announcement last week. And we'll get into this a lot more in the combat corner. Uh, but the, uh, the, the plus five stats or plus five to three different stats of your choice, right? Um, that That's stuck huge. out to me as, holy moly, like this is a, a risky chance that uh, allows your, your hero to be potentially a combat god. Um, you know, I, I think whether it bumps you, it, it essentially takes you and makes you, what, three levels better. Right, I mean, one level by the experience points that you gain for going on the trip and coming back, and then essentially, if if you know you're earning seven stat points per level up, um, which we've seen approximately um, be out there. I mean, some people claim it's five stats point level up, uh, but yeah, that's that's another you know two levels right there. So three levels total, um, just by going on the journey. It and so like that stuck out to me. I was like, holy cow! If if you're gonna plan on going after the, the land um, and not just in their special land, you know, one V one contest for this uh, for survivors only, but any kind of land in the future, I, or, you know, you're trying to get into uh, combat in a big way. I was like, wow, that's the, a chance to send some guys and, and really, you know, make a big difference there. Yeah. I think one more thing now that I'm thinking back on it, that I was really surprised at, um, and they're talking about, you know, the survivors get crystal drops, airdrops. Mm -hmm. I was honestly very surprised by the exponential curve that that amount had. Mm. I think a level one basic, I'm just pulling it up here. A level one basic common hero has 18 crystal if they make it. An exalted mythic, you know, so a mythic dread knight is almost 1300. I like that seems very exaggerated, but then you think about the curve of the of the price point in which you purchase a hero, say, and it probably follows the same exponential curve. So, you know, here I am saying it's interesting, and then now I'm saying that maybe it's not that interesting. So I, I think the devs did a fantastic job of balancing this, I guess, is my takeaway. Yeah, surprise, surprise, the devs got something right. Right. <laughs> right. So, uh, Titan Tom, let's go through your your strategy right now. You're thinking about, did you say 75% of your hero stable? Uh, that, was a, that was a joke on the devs. Like, they've done you know everything extremely well, of course. It's uh, <laughs> fantastic just for those who you know, are new to DFK. I and mean, the devs have been amazing. That's why I say that. But, yeah, we're, we're still hoping to get um, Tango on. I, I bumped into him, like I said, on East, at East Denver there. So, I'm... I'm I haven't messaged him yet, but I, I want to touch base with him maybe in the next week or so. And I'd love to get him on the podcast. I think I think he'd he'd be a great addition, and he, he was really fun to talk to. So, yeah, Definitely. yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of sending you know around three quarters of my heroes, but I need to preface that by saying that you know a lot of my heroes are already sort of in that category of of heroes that are good to send in my mind because I don't have any mythics or legendaries currently um and so a lot of mine are either rare rare advanced uncommon advanced you know uncommon um basics which i think is going to be like the best bang for your buck in terms of the perilous journey um you know and, and, and so i had you know, a lot of my heroes already are just kind of you know right in that in that sweet spot of value i think to do this um so i guess that's why my percentage is probably higher than others like I have a couple of friends with some mythics and you know i i told them i was like i would not send a mythic <laughs> there's no way yeah it's pretty risky yeah a mythic, a mythic even a basic doesn't have all that 
high of a chance, which is, you know, I think it's uh, a mythic basic. 60... It looks like about 59, 59. to 60. Yeah. yeah, somewhere in the low 60s. So, yeah. you know, that's crazy for a mythic hero to, to have barely over a 50% chance. That's that's kind of frightening, you know, because those the, what's the floor price on a mythic is like three hundred, three hundred and some, three hundred and twenty. I'm actually, wow. um, so I'm actually, you know, going a bit uh, counter strategy here. I'm almost thinking I might go buy a mythic basic. Um, there's one that's a uh, a level three and a half um, that I think I could push to five. Um, that I could get up to a 63% chance. And I guess my my thought process is, you know, not from the crystal rewards, but from that combat reward standpoint is, I'm starting to think more so, and you know, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and say combat corners kind of blending into the perilous journey here. Um, yeah. But, you know, and I, I need to do a lot more stats analysis, but I think this, this was triggered by on, um, Sandwich's podcast when they had Petrify on and they were talking about the the potential balance of you know uh, heroes and hero classes in the future one of the things that he was drawing attention to is that you know the basic classes might not be totally out of the running in terms of being viable in the future even against some of your you know advanced elite or transcendent classes so um, I you know I, I'm trying to I in, you know, we are still in the very early stages of looking at the uh, the hero stat growth data, um, but I you know I really like to look at potentially grabbing a floor price basic mythic, sending them out on the journey. You know, I kind of think about it as you know that that it is a lot, it is a huge investment, three hundred and fifty joule, or three hundred and twenty joule. Um, but if they survive. You know, getting that plus five on a mythic that will continue to gain that plus five stat boost every five levels as well. Um, you know, I, I I don't know, like that. It's it's very tempting um, in my mind. I think that's I, I'm really on the combat train here. I have uh, four legendaries, and I'm thinking about sending all of them. Um, yeah, I think you're onto something. So I only actually have one mythic that I summoned. I mean, and it's a warrior. Uh, he's got two summons left, but he's a high gen, so I'm not really, I don't ever really plan to use him. But uh, my point of this guy was he was going to be my tank, right? And I think you bring up a valid point where if I get to choose where those three plus fives go, I'm going to choose, you know, vitality, endurance. strength, and endurance. Right. And so that, that plus five vitality on his subsequent level ups is going to give him huge amounts of HP. He's going to be a monster. And he is. And, you know, I wasn't going to send him, but now that you got me talked into it here all of a sudden, it's just kind of how this goes right now. But uh, um, I think the other thing that that kind of ties in with it, in your to your point about uh, common basics being sleepers, you got to remember, too, that just the sheer quantity of basic heroes that there are. And you have... So when you're leveling up these basic heroes, the RNG tells you that there's going to be a handful of common hero of common mythics that um, get really good level up rolls, mm-hmm. and you're going to get dread knights that get really crappy level up rolls. Even though they have a higher chance to roll, doesn't mean they're going to roll it. So I think I think you're right. And then the mythic also is guaranteed every five levels to have that high level of of um, stat boost, right. which a common dread knight is never going to have. So I mean, you're, you're, yeah, you're bringing all this together here. Now I'm, I'm kind of, I think I'm going to change my mind about eight times in this podcast. And probably. All right. So Tom, we're thinking about, you know, putting our chips all in. You're the poker player. Tell us why we're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, I think the devs have sort of arranged it to where you can, you know, sort of decide for yourself what the risk reward is for you and your situation. Um, like, I don't think, you know, I think that's sort of a, a personal, personal idea or personal opinion on, on how, you know, risky you want to be with it. Cause I think it's, you know, somewhere in the middle there. Um, but in terms of, you know, if there's some listeners out there that have like no idea who to send, 
um, and like what type of hero to send if they're thinking about sending some and not sending others. You know, I did have a few thoughts about that just for them. Um, you know, I think Nindorf mentioned earlier, but he's got, you know, a bunch of these guys that are, you know, Gen 1, 10 out of 10s or whatever with, with a lot of summons. And I think the first, you know, the first heroes you should consider sending are ones with zero summons or low summons left, yeah. right? I agree with um, that. Yeah, that's right. You've you know, extracted that value, right? Yeah, because like basically, you know, this whole thing is going to be that I'm going to say is like, you know, you want to send the, the heroes that are our least amount of value that you could get in the tavern, right? Because the other ones you could just sell for, for a high amount of jewel. Like, for instance, you had a, an uncommon ninja gardener versus an uncommon paladin miner. Like, you would you would send the ninja gardener on the journey every single time Absolutely. over the paladin gardener. Yeah, good so, point. Like, so like mismatched professions, I think, are really good candidates to sell as well as low summons. So like, you know, the ninja gardener or like the, you know, the thief forger or, you know, or whatever. Um, Summoner then, miner. <laughs> yeah. Steve, <laughs> like, Steve yeah, the right. pirate, as we call him on our podcast. Yeah, the, the Dark Knight Fisher, you know, those, those types of those types of heroes, I think, are good candidates to send. Um, well, so that's all. fascinating. Because that yeah. tells me that if, if we all do this and we play this game, we actually can kind of modify the, the pool of heroes and sort of almost eliminate that class of <laughs> non-matching profession almost. You know, not fully, but you can help trim it a lot at least. That's, uh, my mind's blown again. <laughs> We're yeah. complicit in genocide here. This is yeah, <laughs> right. scary. Oh, yeah. Whoops. A little frightening yeah. here. I mean, because because you got to think too, right? Like mismatched professions. Not only are they, you know, are the like the the paladin minor. Not only is it going to be fairly equal in combat because the combat doesn't matter with your profession, right? Right. So mismatched heroes are good to send on the perilous journey. A because lower risk, die, higher reward. I like it. Yeah, if they die, they're less valuable, you know. And B, like they'll still be pretty good in combat because their profession doesn't matter. I like it. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought of uh, I hadn't thought of that wrinkle. Um, you know, definitely on board with the uh, you know use up their their summons train. I'm actually doing that with all my legendaries right now. I stopped on most of them um, around the you know somewhere around the somewhere between four and five summons mark. Um, and so I, I'm actually go, going through and depleting those here over uh, the next week or so as as we prepare for for the PJs. Yeah, and I mean the other, you know, thing that is probably obvious, but you know, when heroes return from the journey, they get a full XP bar. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to send heroes that are that have just recently been leveled. You know, not the ones that are almost leveled. You know, so as as the journey gets closer, if you have some stamina potions that you want to use to finish up and get those guys leveled up before they go on the journey, that's that would obviously be key, right? Yeah, and there's a, a window of time between when you can start sending them and when you can stop sending them. And then there's a window of time when everyone goes on the journey. And so uh, that during that, that first window when you can send them, it's like they're going to be listed in the tavern. And so you can no longer quest with them. Um, and so, you know, it, it might behoove you to, to try to use up that, that last remaining bit of time to, to go capture that, that final level so you can maximize that, that full X, XP bar that Titan Tom is referring to. Yeah. And, you know, if, like if Nindorf was, um, concerned that a couple of his heroes had too many summons to send, I would just start now you know, renting those out at floor prices, trying to get the, get rid of all the summons. If you already know that you're going to send them or you want to send them, just start renting them out now. Yeah, or... Yeah, yeah, and, that's a good point. And, you know, Nindorf, you alerted uh, this to me yesterday. Samich was going over uh, a Gen 1 strategy on, on his podcast last night and on Twitter. Uh, walk us through what that is real quick. I think that's like kind of the alternate to, to summoning and said you could you know, or excuse me, alternate to hiring is you just bang out the summons with those Gen 1s, right? Yeah, so I think his premise was the fact that the floor price on 10 out of 10 Gen 1s is at pretty much an all-time low. I think it's like 80 Joule. You can get a 10 out of 10 Gen 1 right now. Um, for Gen 0 holders, that sucks, but for people who want to buy a hero, and like you said, 
just summon a whole bunch of new heroes, um, you can kick out if you if you're able to purchase say two or four of those, you can kick out potentially twenty heroes and send all of them for an investment of maybe four hundred jewel, which I mean that sounds like a lot, but even if the odds are in your favor, if you get fifteen summons, you're gonna get you you might very well get a legendary or two out of that. You know, I mean you, you might you, you can recoup a lot of your value with a couple good rolls. And he was saying he was even paying no attention to matching profession, just floor price, just just mix and match and see what you get. Because they're all worth jewel, they're all gonna be worth um runes on the other side if they win or if they make it or they don't make it. Um and then also like I, I think it's there's also something to be said for that RNG role. You can get lucky, you know. Yeah, and those those Gen One ten tens with the, the current jewel price at crashing to four eighty two right now, it's three hundred and eighty five bucks for a four Gen One ten ten. Wow, that's crazy low. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. All right, well let's uh, go ahead and slide into the combat corner section. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about gaining stats and, and allowing your heroes to be prepped for combat. Um, you drew our attention, Titan Tom, to a note that, that Hubert uh, said and, and someone in our, our DFK Discord, Adventures in DFK Discord, dropped um, a, a screenshot of that. Do you want to go ahead and um, read us through, you know, the, the, the Hubert Alpha that's coming out there? And I, I always love Sandwich's term for this, uh, the, the sacred texts of Hubert. Um, and so, uh, what are we, what are we looking at as, as that information? Um, yeah. And what should we be thinking about? Yeah, I can just, should I just read it out? Cause it's, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's something that was, yeah, please do. The, um, yeah. So he just dropped basically the details of how the land tournaments were going to go. So he said, he was talking in the chat after, and he said this, uh, each tournament will be a specific contest centered around one stat. Some lands will be a contest of intelligence, others vitality, etc. You will have a modified stat score that will include bonuses if your hero has one or both of the stat genes tied to that stat. The actual tournament will be a one versus one where those modified stat scores are compared, and the hero with the higher score will have a higher chance of success. It will still be RNG based, so a low strength wizard could potentially knock out a high strength dark knight. It will have multiple rounds until only one hero is left. So mm. I kind of threw at that kind of like a March Madness style bracket with like seedings almost. Yeah. Yeah, oh, for absolutely. Sure. And so are they talking about these skills and abilities that we've been referring to? We just don't really know what they mean yet. Is that is that what they're referring to? Um, no, I think it's the actual the actual stats, right? Just stats for skills themselves. Yeah. I yeah. So, I and they did stats. say the stats were going to be sure. king. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it, it, something that stuck out to me here as note, and I think he said this at one point during the ETH Denver uh, presentation as well, is that they are going to make the green and blue stats count for something else. And so I think in, in combat, if that means, you know, if you have a, you know, a Dark Knight with boosted strength, that whatever the way that they create their calculation formula to see if you know you beat someone else in combat it's i think it's going to be both your base strength stat and the fact that you have a blue green or a purple i think it's going to add uh more to whatever that that combination is and so you know i, I think you're going to want to look at uh, hopefully that that formula or that equation comes out there and you know kind of like he directly calls out you know maybe there are going to be some wizards that have boosted strength out there that you know maybe they'll get uh, a little orange jesus on their side um and, and be able to to come through so titan tom i guess what you know this stuck out to you enough to to call it out to us i guess what's your your preliminary analysis on this well you know one of my friends was was saying oh i don't want to send my legendary thief because he has super high high luck and that's just like kind of a special you know special quality of that hero well you know after reading this it's almost like well if they're going to run a land tournament that's you know luck specific like i think the way i'm interpreting it is that there's going to be like a strength tournament a vitality turn intelligence uh -huh. turn a luck turn and you get to choose which one do you want to enter 
right? So like you can enter your your wizard with pink intelligence in the intelligence tournament if you want to for like a I'm sure it's going to be like dual fee to to enter the tournament, right? You know, and then so you know, so I think if you do have a hero that has like an especially high number in a certain stat, it's it might be worth sending them on the journey actually because if he gets through and is able to enter this sort of tournament, you have a big advantage. I like that. Nine Dwarf, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think that's all great. One thing that I had kind of thought of as you guys were talking, you know, I'd heard someone in our Discord and mentioned recently that the the green and the blue stats are effectively worthless, and that kind of resonated with me. And then I did remember that, yeah, you're right. That's something that the devs had talked about um, the other week, that they're going to make that come back. And I, I fully suspect that you'll see skill trees or something in the future where um, the the blue and the purple might actually, and green, might unlock new skills. Mm. I think they're going to play a role more than they currently play. So, uh, honestly, at this point, I would write off absolutely nothing in the genetics of the hero as being worthless <laughs> because the devs will make sure it has a place and they will make sure it's balanced. Like I feel like that's their mission in life is to have us think things don't matter and then be like nope just kidding they all matter so my paladin fisher with a desert background still has a chance yes <laughs> <laughs> so we should uh, all, in, all in on the monks now that's right <laughs> all in on the monks absolutely yeah. yeah they i will say you know i actually we've been kind of a little bit of monk uh, apologists here um but this kind of uh, I would say the the monks, I mean, don't really stand out with this style of tournament because they're, they're not going to specialize in any one thing in particular. And as we've speculated before, and I think they've come out and outright said that certain tournaments are going to happen and there's going to be not only, at, like you're kind of talking about Titan Tom, but potentially some jewel entry fee, but I think there's also going to be like a a real life time entry fee where you know it might take you and this is this was your idea first Nydorf, but it might take you a stamina bar and it might take you you know two real life days to travel from one part of a map to another that way you can't be in all the different tournaments at once and so i, th- I think that'll play into it as well and you know i guess monks really are kind of getting the short end of the stick here being the generalist they they might struggle uh, really standing out in any one tournament. Yeah, I think that's a good point, but I think that that's one of those things right now where we're like, oh, they're they're not good because they don't have boosted stats, and you know that's another one of those prime examples with like, nah, you just wait till you see their skills, they'll be good. Mm, like, yeah, don't worry, they don't need like they, balance is fine for a monk, I suspect. I okay. think that'll play well to their skill sets. So uh, it, that's just another prime example. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, what else do we have to go over on on the combat corner? Anything else that that you guys want to discuss? May Tom, you go first. Titan Tom, are you there? I don't think I had anything to add. Oh. No. All right, Nindorf, Any kind of closing combat remarks? Um, I think all I really have that we haven't really maybe mentioned is you know we're kind of reiterating the importance of stats and i think i want to tie it back to um what we started off talking with you know our dev dive i think we're going to try to keep working on tools to get you some analysis and stats and um you know we did add that that ability when you're looking at hero data you punch in a hero number and you you enter it in and you're able to see what his average number of stat gains he's gotten through his leveling so we're going to keep trying to add more and more of that data. I think that's going to be where it's king. Data is going to be king in the future of this game, especially as kind of an idle combat, where it's strategy up front and mm-hmm. not necessarily strategy on the fly. So I think you know, keep keep looking out and giving us suggestions, but we're going to try to get more and more data in you guys' hands. I yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's you know, I'm I'm really excited about the the future. I you know, I actually really. So let's talk about idle combat, and then we can uh, close up for the night. Um, you know, I, I'm actually really looking forward to idle combat. I think that there is an incredible amount of, you know, uh, chess game methodology that can be incorporated into 
selecting your your heroes, your party, the skills, the order of those skills that they're going to use, um, and then you know being able to potentially interface with them on kind of an intermediate basis during the battle. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to that. I, I think it's going to be a, a ton of fun. Uh, what do you think, Titan Tom? Yeah, I think it's it's it'll be fun to see uh, what kind of PVE quests come out. Um, just so that each you know each class is going to have kind of their own their own uh, quest, and then in terms of the the, the P versus P, where you can kind of reset your skill points. Like I think Hubert said, each you know each hero has their own skill points that they can. Mm -hmm. you know, I interpreted that you can realign the skill points for each battle that you get into in the way that you want to. So I think there's going to be, I'm, ho I'm hoping at least, you know, coming from a poker background that, you know, in a, a game of skill that I hope there's, there's some skill involved in the battling process. Cause I think that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I, I think there will be. And I, I think there's going to be a really healthy metagame that develops with, you know, strategies, counter strategies, counter, counter strategies, um, to, to the heroes that you want to bring and, you know they've they've referenced time and again that they are balancing the classes for combat. Um, so I, like you said, Nidor fit. You know if the the monk um, may not look look hot now, but you know maybe he'll really uh, he'll he'll play some uh, strong cards with uh, with his abilities. That's right. He might be the the snake to the mongoose, or is it the mongoose to the snake? I forget. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for for us here from the Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. Uh, good luck out to you, uh, adventurers, and uh, thank you to Titan Tom for joining us, and uh, thank you, Nidor, for your continued work on the podcast and and on the uh, the website. My pleasure. Enjoy, everybody. Take care. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Bye bye.